Hey, I'm Terry Cutler, and today I want to share with you four tips that's going to help you keep you and your family safe online. So the first tip is around passwords. A lot of times the students are sharing passwords with other kids and they're hacking into each other's accounts, especially email uh, accounts, because they're, they're breaking in and they're sending out sexual comments to other students thinking it came from the account holder or they're breaking into each other's games and taking over their accounts. So the other issue I'm seeing around these passwords is that a lot of folks create really lousy passwords like John123. So I want to share with you a little trick on how you can create a really strong password. So to create a strong password, you want to have a, a mixture of uppercase, lowercase, and symbols in your password. And you're, you want to have a bit about 16 to 24 characters long. Now, I know what you're thinking, right? Is this guy nuts? Like, how do you remember a password this long? So let me quickly show you how you can do this by using simple things like phrases or song lyrics. So let's take an example together. I had a great day at work, 2021, exclamation point. So what I like to do is remove the spacing, I capitalize each letter of the word, and this password alone will take 10 years to crack. And I'm pretty sure it's stronger than what you guys have right now. But since we're here to up our game in cybersecurity, we want to replace maybe the O's with a zero and the A's with that symbol. Now this password alone now will take 39 centuries to crack. So the second tip I want to share with you is around internet predator recruitment. So most people don't realize that pimps and internet, and internet predators are recruiting children right inside the homes and parents don't have a clue. So let me take you back to the day where you used to watch television and your parents didn't like what you were watching on TV. So they would come in the room and just change the channel on you. Remember that? Now with the kids being online, the parents don't have a clue about what they're doing. So they don't know what they're doing on their tablets, don't know what they're doing on their phones. So the perfect victims are the ages are between the ages of 11 and 14. And they look for signs like those that don't have an infinite bedtime or they can leave the house whenever they want, right? So you need to look for signs like this. And my best advice to you is because most of these kids like to chat at like two in the morning, right? So if they're tired and such, you need to basically take away these phones at night before they go to bed. So the third tip I want to share with you is around being careful about what you post online. Now this is a big one, okay? So I see a lot of craziness, things like going on vacation for a week, see you next Sunday. But you don't realize you just told the world that your house is empty, okay? Just things like this. So parents need to also learn about internet lingo. So this is a whole new world here, it's a whole new language. So imagine you're, you're looking at your child's device and you're seeing a chat and all of a sudden you're seeing things like P911. Well, what on earth does this mean? Well, it's actually code for parent in the room. Or what about MOS, mom over shoulder? These are all abbreviations that you need to be aware of, right? This is a whole new language now. So you also need to look for signs like, are they being secretive? Like for example, every time you used to walk past them, are they covering over their device so you don't see the screen? Because back in the day, we used to suggest to keep the computer in a common area. But now, since everything's gone mobile, you know, the kids have their tablets or their, or their phone all day long. Also look for things like, is their browser history deleted? You know, these are all signs that something might be happening. So the fourth tip I want to share with you today is around how to properly Google yourself online. Now this is important because cyber criminals are looking about what you're posting online and building up a special phishing attack called a spear phishing attack, which is a more targeted attack, and having you click on links you're not supposed to so you get scammed or hacked. Okay? So I want to show you quickly a, a really cool trick about how you can find information about yourself that you didn't even know existed. All right, let's fire up a browser and let's go to www.google.com. Once you're here, the first thing I want you to do is to go into your settings and change the search settings. You see here, we have turn on safe search. This means that if there's any content that's not appropriate, which is being searched for, it will not appear in the searches. But because we want to find out all the information about ourselves online, we want to turn this feature off to no filtering. So this way we're going to see what's really going on. Then you want to scroll down and save your settings. Now, in this case, I'm going to use my name for this demonstration because I once used someone else's name during a live event and inappropriate content showed up on the big screen. So I'm never doing that again. Now, if I just do a search for Terry Cutler, I end up with about 8,500,000 results. Now, that's just way too much information to find out about somebody. And I'm not that popular. Do you know how I actually get more specific about this search? quotation marks. 
So if I end up putting quotes around my name, this will tell Google to look exactly for what's in between these quotes, even if it's spelt wrong or whatever. It's going to be searching for precisely for this. Now, if I hit enter now, you'll notice that I dropped down to about 15,500 results. Because if you don't use quotation marks, Google's going to look for the word Terry and Cutler has two separate searches. So this is getting interesting now. Now, let's say you're looking for information about yourself and maybe you belong to a soccer team or maybe you like to drive the kids to school. So you want to type something about you that you think would be in the public. For example, it could be an occupation or a sport. Now I've seen situations where you might be the soccer dad and another parent decided to build a website that had your name along with other coaches and their personal contact details. The contact number that was put there was his private cell phone number. So I just want you to be aware of this. In my case, because I'm in the cybersecurity business, I'm just gonna type in the word hacker as an example. Now, as you can see, I dropped down to under 3,600 results. Now, because I do a lot of stuff in the media, I don't want to see terrycutler.com or LinkedIn or Twitter because I already know about myself there. I only want to see the information that maybe some other people are posting about me. Do you know how to remove the search results that you don't want to see? Use the minus symbol. So I'm going to go up here and start removing the search results by typing in minus terrycutler.com. This is going to remove Terry Cutler from the whole list. And we're going to continue removing more web pages as we go along. We'll remove Security Week. Then we could just continue eliminating as we go along. Make sure you also click on images and videos to see if anyone's made any photos or videos about you. Now, in this one example, someone's tagged me in a bunch of toilets. But this picture is actually legit because Ifset Global did a story on me where I was hired to hack into a company from the outside and I just couldn't do it. So I drove over there and I was able to trick the receptionist into letting me use their public washroom. But the problem is their washroom was behind the counter, so she would have had to buzz me in. And luckily she said, make it quick. And while I was in there, I left two special USB keys in the stalls. And about two hours later, a curious employee plugged into his computer, which loaded my hacking software and let me right into his system and bypassed all their corporate security. It's a pretty cool story. It's called the USB keys in the urinal. So I invite you to Google it. This is how you would actually start looking for your information online. Maybe type in your phone number, what school you belong to, where your workplace is, any specific information that you think would be about you online. Now, in a live workshop I did earlier this year, most of the adults didn't find much information about themselves online, but some of them did find out that a local newspaper posted some photos and some information about their kids because they belong to a soccer team. And that's where some of the problem is. These folks didn't know that information was there because a third party or someone else posted it online. So by doing these searches, they're able to find this information. So you must look for personal identifiable information about yourself, such as your phone number, your schools, your home address, etc. So if you'd like to learn a bit more about how to protect yourself, your family, or your business online, then I invite you to check out my free video series at www.internetsafetyuniversity. So once you're here, you're going to enter your email and your name, and these videos will be delivered to your inbox virus-free. I hope these tips were helpful.